And welcome everybody back to the Living Life Podcast number 80. Number 80 and we're back. It's been a while. I hope you guys have been good and hope you guys have been doing great. My name is Rick and this is my beautiful partner. Jerry! Partner in crime and in life. Yeah. My wife. I feel that. Of course. So yeah, I hope you guys have been great. Uh, we have been we have been really good lately so far. Uh, got an update for you guys on my uh, on my family and my dad especially. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to be talking about um, just what's up with us lately. What's going on in our lives? And then also we're going to be getting into the Suez Canal tobacco with the uh, the ship that's stuck there. And also, we're going to be talking about uh, a Twitch streamer that is queefing for subs. And we're going to be taking a look at the video. I hope it's not too graphic. Just letting you guys know right off the bat. It's it's not graphic because you can't see anything, of course. But, you know, you can hear it. And that's the main thing. Uh, so, yeah, let's get started. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, my dad. My dad, uh, my family got COVID at the beginning, at the end of, has it been 30 seconds? It's been 30 seconds. So yeah, uh, at the beginning of the year, at the end end of Christmas, beginning of the new year, they came in contact with somebody that had the good old cocoa virus. And uh, everybody in my family, my mom, my brother, my nephew... Well, not everybody. My sister doesn't count. Uh, but most of my family had it, and they had, a, you know, pretty bad, pretty bad case of it. But my dad uh, ultimately had the worst, worst case of it. I'm pretty sure I explained that already. I think your brother, your brother didn't get it really that bad. He had it. He he had it, but it, it was like it was he didn't like get a, like chest. No, it was kind of like when you get sick. When yeah. it was kind of like a few days, and then it's like, okay. It was gone. I'm, I'm over it. But my dad got the worst. He spent almost a month in the hospital, uh, which was pretty devastating because we thought, we thought for sure, we thought for sure, like my mom thought for sure, like my dad was gone. Yeah. And I thought for sure, I was already contemplating, like, you know, what am I going to do? How is he going to be buried? Uh, you know, how much the funeral is going to cost? Uh, you know. All the things you set in motion when you feel like, you know, your family member is going to pass away. And what are you going to do to comfort comfort yeah. your mother, comfort my mom? Uh, you know, started already thinking about all this stuff. Um, and, you know, he started saying to when he was in there that, you know, I think he thought that was it, too. Mm-hmm. He thought he was he was gone. He was a goner. And uh, lo and behold, he came out. He came out of the hospital. And uh, <clears throat> after he got out of the hospital, he's he's kind of like sprung up within like, I want to say two weeks of getting out of the hospital. He was already better. Uh, after four weeks out of the hospital, he's already walking on his own because he wouldn't be able to walk on his own after... After the whole hospital thing. He couldn't even get up on his own. He couldn't go to the bathroom on his own. He needed assistance. But now, four weeks out, and he's already, like, magically better working on stuff. Uh, removing the garage door. and Back to work. Like, too. yeah, back to work, which was I was concerned about because he's good, but he's not. I still don't see it like he's back. You know, like, I don't still see that he's back. I think if it's still too fresh. Yeah, and uh, it's just amazing to me. I, I can't believe that he was sprung out of it so quickly, that fast, from being on the verge of death to being able to take down his own garage uh, garage door opener because it was already broken. You know, I had to help him a little bit, but, you know, for the main part, he did pretty much the, the worst job, which was taking it off. So, which was really interesting to me. And, you know, I'm very grateful and very happy that he made it. He made it out. And so, yeah, that was that's the update. Yeah, my, my dad's doing great. So thank you guys for all the well wishes. Whoever 
uh, whoever sent us the well wishes, thank you so much. Uh, I think it worked. I think it worked. I think he, he made it. <laughs> so, uh, as you guys know, vaccines uh, have been doing very good here in the U.S. Uh, Biden beat his, uh, or I shouldn't say Biden, but President Biden beat his goal of one of uh, 100 million shots in 100 days, under 100 days. And he beat it already. He's already at 100 million shots, and he's at, like, day 60-something or day 70-something. So, yeah, um, back to it. I had to close the door because the sponge bomb was blasting on the other room. Uh, so, yeah, uh, he beat out his goal of 100 uh, million doses or 100 million shots in people's arms in under 100 days. So that's really good. We even got our shot. We got the Moderna vaccine. Uh, we got it at CVS. And I can tell you that the vaccine was a pain in the ass to a schedule. Yeah. I spent, I don't know how long, how long did I spend trying to look for a, a, a spot? Maybe like, like three to four days. Three to four days, right? Yeah. And then when I did find it, it was like in the wee early hours in the morning. And it was like by chance. I just happened to well, check. Well, that's because, okay, that's because you wanted to get the Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. Johnson & Johnson. But see, but that's because you were looking for specific CVSs who were giving out Johnson & Johnson. Yeah. But the ones that they were having, like the ones that were giving out Johnson Johnson, were like way far from us, or even they didn't have it at all. The day, or they didn't have it at all. Yeah. So then that's when you were looking for. That's when I started researching the other just vaccine. Just any, uh, well, except for Pfizer, but yeah, any like you know, CVS that was giving out the Moderna, and you ended up finding one. And yep. And we have happened to find one down the street from our house, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah. And because we do work for the food and, I guess, food agriculture industry, uh, we, you know, we, we were able to get our appointment in. And we got it in. And we got our uh, shot. And uh, you can't see it anymore because it's been, uh, what, two weeks? Uh let me sh tell you what I what we experienced from the vaccine. I experienced uh, the first day that we got it. Uh, I didn't really feel much. When they gave it to me, I didn't really feel anything at all. I had my head turned that way, and the lady put it in, and then, and I didn't. You know, I don't like seeing the needles go in my arm, Jerry. But I didn't. I didn't feel anything. And then uh, you know, I was waiting. I should have uh, sent Armin in with you. <laughs> So, yeah, um, we were waiting after they, for first, you know, we went in, showed our ID. They gave us our little uh, vaccination card, which I can't show you because it's in my wallet somewhere. And um, so, yeah, they gave us our little card. We go to the back. We they talk. Tell you, they tell you to wait. <clears throat> yeah, they tell us to wait. To be called. And we're like six feet apart, of course, <laughs> in the store. Masks on. Masks on and everything. Talk to the nurse, or the, not the nurse, but the, I guess, pharmacist. And they tell us, you know, what we can expect, and uh, that our shot, after the shot, we'd have to wait 15 minutes in the so-called waiting area, which is the aisles with that you shop in. In the card department. Yeah. In the card department where oh, you're just sitting there. How convenient, like, to read a bunch of cards. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we were just sitting there. Uh, they gave me the shot. I sat there. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel any soreness or redness in my arm. I didn't feel dizzy. I didn't, nothing. Nothing at all. It was just like like a normal shot. Uh, and then after, I think a day later, I started getting the soreness. Like I started feeling like somebody punched me in my arm. Like really hard. Uh, and then... So yeah, uh, that, that first... The second night that I had the shot, I could not sleep on my side. I'm a side sleeper. So I was I was sleeping on my side, and it was just painful. I had to turn to the other way. And then I couldn't turn the other way because my shoulder on this side is, is sore. It's, like, hurting already from, uh, I guess, work. Uh, I guess raising my arm too much or something. 
So that was my experience. Uh, it didn't go away after till maybe the third day. And then that's when I like stopped feeling the soreness. And then it just it just went away. It was really cool. So what was your your uh, experience? Same. The same? Did you feel any different? Did it last longer than me? No, just no? about the same. It lasted maybe about a day or two, a, a day and a half. Mm. And then it started to just... Did like, you feel the shot going in? No. But then again, I'm weird. and I. Oh, you saw it going in. I like, I like <laughs> something like that. Yeah, Jerry's the type where she's just like, ooh, yeah. ooh, go ahead, nurse. Mm. Yeah. And me, I'm just like, oh, I'm like, ugh, I can't look. No, can't yeah, look. I, Take, I was, just do it. The just nurse, do it. Yeah, the nurse was like, because I told her, I said, I'm, I'm one of the weird ones that likes to get shots. Like, and she's just like, oh, wow, you're, you're different. You are weird. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I, I thanks, nurse. I took Armin in with me because I wanted him to see. So when his when it's his turn, he's not gonna freak out and be all scared, you know. Mm. Maybe you know, maybe it was a good thing that he went with me because it was just like, yeah, okay, it's done, it's over. It was you over. Know? It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was it was really easy. Not a big deal at all. Uh, the vaccine, no side effects. My friend, uh, one of my best friends, uh, he did get the Moderna vaccine at work. They were giving it to him at work. And uh, the first one, he said he didn't feel anything, just the soreness in his arm. But the second one, he said he felt like like dookie, like sick. Like he was like, like he was sick, sick. <clears throat> and he was out for, I want to say, three days. And then he came back. After the third day, he 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 was so bad he didn't want to play games. That's how bad he was. Video games. Video games. Yeah. Not like Cause, games. Yeah, because uh, my ass uh got an Xbox uh, Series X. Uh, thanks to my mama, she was able to help me out. Not me. Not me. Not not Jerry. My actual mama, mm. and uh, she was able to help me out just to get it out because they were only available. Uh, through the, uh, what, what program is it called? The Xbox All Access, something like that. So essentially it's like, you get the Xbox and then you get two years of, uh, Xbox, uh, Game Pass. So then you, you get that together in a bundle for like, uh, 700 bucks. So that was the only way that I, you were able to get the Xbox. Oh, if you got it that way. Yeah, if you got it that way. And you have to finance it through uh, this company called Citizens. Mm. So I was like, damn, like, my fucking credit is shoddy. So I can't. Like, I can't just, like, buy this. So I was like, hey, mom, do me a favor. Get it out for me, and then I'll just pay it off cash. And she's like, are you sure? I was like, yes, please. So, yeah. So she was like, okay. So she took it out for me, and I paid it off, and... Now we got we we have an Xbox, so yeah. My friend Alex, he he was so bad after the shot that he didn't want to play his new Xbox Series X. So, so uh, hopefully that's not how we are. Hopefully it's just like yes, that's hopefully that's not how we are because we're actually gonna get the shot on your birthday. We're not gonna say the date though, so we're gonna get the shot on your birthday. So we'll see how you turn out. Sure After the fine. second shot, sure and watch her like, oh! I think, I think it. I think it maybe it's because of people's like autoimmune system. Yeah. That like, if, if they get sick, when they get sick, they're like, oh. Yeah. Oh. But you you get bad though. No, I only get a bad cough. Yeah. If I have the flu or something, it's different. Yeah. Then it's like oh, I just feel like I'm like. They're drained. But not for the most part. I'm not like all like, oh, poor me. Yeah. It's just like, oh. <laughs> I get more like up here. Oh, like sinuses and throat and coughing, huh? That's it. Well, that's me too because of the my pulse nasal drip. So anytime I get sick, it's pretty much just up here. And then if I use the Afrin stuff, then I become addicted to it. 
Yeah. And then I, uh, the only way to get an unclogged nose is with Afrin. Well, see, that's one of the things that my problem is, too, is that, like, the only time I've gotten really bad body aches was when I got the fever. Remember that one time? Yeah. And that was it. But, like, normally when I get sick, it's just the first nasal drip. Yeah. And then I'm stuck with a cough for, like, a month. Mm-hmm. And then after that, then I'm there. Yeah. Until the next. But, you know, what's, what's crazy is that we were talking about it, and, like, we... We haven't gotten sick. We haven't we haven't gotten sick for like a whole year. Yeah, we haven't gotten any sickness. Yeah. Other than allergies. Well, I have gotten allergies because I after I installed my Xbox, I had to clean all the wires back there because I had to take off my PS3, my Xbox 360, my Xbox One. And I had to take all that stuff out and it was just sit like dusty in the back, all the way in the back. Mm-hmm. And as I was fixing everything up my nose just got really bad and i started sneezing and and just dripping boogers and everything i thought i was sick i was like oh damn here we go i got it but no it was just it was just dust after like the second day went away (laughs) and i got retested again for for the cocoa uh what like a couple days ago and i came out negative again so so that was cool that's that's how it's turning out for us. It's Everything's going great right now. Let's keep it going. YouTube's going great. And... Everything else is going great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, everything's going good, guys. Everything's going good with us. I hope everything is going good with you guys. Uh, let us know in the comments what's going on with your life. We'd love to know with anybody that's out there. Anyways, let's keep going. Uh, we got... <clears throat> All right. So if you guys didn't know, there's this giant ship, uh, which is owned by Evergreen. Uh, and it's basically a gigantic cargo ship. And uh, for some reason, due to high winds and, and I don't know what the hell else, the ship got stuck on the Suez Canal. Well, you know what? I hate to say it's a on here, but I believe that because those winds that we had yes the other day, those, those were pretty, pretty those bad. Were pretty pretty bad, and so I could see that happening. They were really bad, actually. Yeah. A lot of trees toppled over, and if you guys didn't know, also a production company that was filming a Netflix show uh, had a crane up, which is very idiotic. You you know usually you want to put them down, so. Uh, that that crane that they had to do the shoot fell over onto the house they were shooting at. Mm. So uh, it's pretty bad for Netflix, and it's just like like down the street from us. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I can see that happening with the boat, like the wind, the boat moving the boat, shifting the boat over. Yeah. So yeah, according to news reports, they were saying that it was like heavy, very strong winds with. Uh, uh, a sandstorm. So I, they don't know exactly how it happened, but the ship pretty much got stuck in the Suez Canal sideways. And I'm gonna ex- uh, give you a quick explanation of how that's gonna how that looks. So uh, let's bring in the uh, bring in the the Reddit memes here, so you guys can see what we're talking about. So this is what's going on with the Suez Canal boat. So here it is, (laughs) as portrayed by Austin Powers with his uh, (laughs) little cart. They can't get it out of the Suez Canal. (laughs) So essentially the boat stuck like that. And this is, uh, how how many feet is, how long it is? I don't know, like like 8,000 feet or something like that, or I don't know. Is it's it? gigantic. It's a gigantic ship, a cargo ship. So that's what's going on with it. Uh, here's another explanation of what's going on with it. This is the the evergreen right there, right? And this is the way the, I guess the 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 land on the bottom of the Suez Canal looks. So you can see that the rudder and the the motor is basically stuck within the sand. On one side, and then the other side, the front of the ship is stuck within the sand as well, and they're trying to dig it out. Mm. 
So as you can see, there's that little crane right there trying to dig it out. This gigantic ship. And it's stuck back here. And it's stuck on that side. So this is causing billions of dollars in... Like, it's costing a lot of money to these companies. Because now... Their, their shipment is stuck out there. They're, they're stuck out there in the middle of the sea. So here is a picture of all the ships that are just waiting for the Suez Canal to be reopened or breached or whatever. So you got... It's, it's breached right now. So they're just waiting for them to clear it because this... On both ends, it's causing a backup. On both ends of the canal. Oh, that's the ship over there in the front? Uh, this is the ship over here in the corner. <laughs> you see it right there? Yeah. That's that's like the saddest thing ever. Oh my goodness. And then these are all the ships that are waiting to go in. Oh just parked parked in the ocean. And, and you can imagine they're just like... Like, I want to go home already. Like, I'm done with this shipment, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Here's a picture of what's going on on one side of the of the uh, thing here. They're trying to dig it out using this, uh, this, this digger here. And I don't know. I don't know if they're going to be able to get it out. I don't know. And they, they're, they're afraid, too, of just tugging on it. Because they're afraid of the ship either tipping over... Onto the Suez Canal. Mm. So yeah. Uh, so yeah. That's what's going on with the Suez Canal. And the only reason why I know about the Suez Canal. Is because of the, the crown. If, if you guys don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the crown. And that was just like the Suez Canal. I was like what the hell. I'm pretty sure I heard about it in high school, but it's been so long that I don't even remember anymore. But in The Crown, if you guys didn't watch it, it's like basically the life of uh, of uh, the royal family. Like from the beginning of, uh, of Queen Elizabeth when she was young and her father, King... Uh, what was his name? King... Uh, I forgot his name. King something. <laughs> King something. But yeah, basically it goes from the start of his her her reign, her father's reign, to her reign, all the way up to now to uh what is it? Uh not not all the way up to now, but all the way up to Princess Diana. And uh So his name was George. Oh yeah, uh King George. And essentially Within the show, they show uh, a debacle that was going on with the Suez Canal when the Egyptians... No, no, no. I'm sorry. Sorry. It was King... Henry. King Henry? Henry. Is it King Henry? Yeah. Are you sure? No. No, Queen Elizabeth's no. father. Look it up. Yeah, it is. It says Queen Elizabeth was the daughter of... of King Henry, George. Of Henry and Anne. Henry? Bowman. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's the only reason why I know about the Suez Canal is because there was a huge problem where the British were trying to take it away from the Egyptians after they took it over. And essentially they lost it because nobody would back them up on it other than France. Even the U.S. didn't back them up on that one. Wow. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the Suez Canal. That's what's going on. And I got to show you this. This is the last thing we're going to talk about in the podcast. Uh, wait, it's 18 minutes. No, it's not 18 minutes. It's more than 18 minutes. So, yeah, this is the last thing we're going to talk about in the podcast. It's uh, We found a video of a streamer that, I mean, I, I don't want to, I don't want to show it completely. Maybe I should show it off to the side because she's kind of provocative, right? So there's a, a streamer on. Or you know what? Oh, play it, but don't show it. Does that make sense? So don't 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 show the picture. Okay, so this is the girl here. Let me give you guys. It's her name is It's Pinky. Okay, 
if you guys want, you can go and sub, you know, sub to her on Twitch. If you guys uh, are into uh, queefing, she's uh, queefing for subs, as they as they're saying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom zoom in up here, so you don't see. No, I was gonna say pull out of the picture and just do the audio. No, no, but so that way you can see her face at least. No. All right, ready? So essentially, she she's like, "Oh, you like you like uh, queefy, me?" Eh? Well, you don't want to show it. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna show it. It's just gonna show her face, and it's not gonna show her actually doing it down there. You know? Well, she's fully clothed. She's fully clothed, so there's no nudity. So, yeah. On obviously in Twitch, there's zero nudity because if you do show nudity, you're out, basically. You like the queefs? Yeah, I can literally queef on to command. You guys want to hear this shit? Y'all want to hear this shit? Hold up. Let me just put the microphone right here. Did you guys hear it going into my vagina? Now let me push the air out. <laughs> Did you guys hear the air going in? <laughs> I'm going out. I'm out of your hand. <laughs> to the queefing thing, it's amazing. You like the queefs? Yeah, I can literally queef on to command. You guys want to hear this shit? Mm, you want to hear this shit? Hold up. Let me just put the microphone out here. <laughs> Did you guys hear it going into my <laughs> vagina? Now let me push the air no. out. <laughs> Did you guys hear the air going in? Oh, I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> then you're an app. <laughs> oh my god, that's disgusting, dude. Oh, dude, that was that's disgustingly funny. It's like I was like, what? <laughs> and this is we just found this like literally like minutes ago. We're just on on reddit and then it was just on the front page and it says it literally just says it's on live stream fail and it says queefing for subs i gotta give that guy a thumbs or live stream fail i gotta give him a thumbs up because that thing was funny it was posted by phoebe v bruce it so v bruce it give you guys a, a prop over here let's see what they're saying bro what the f and these people are like, I'm speechless. Oh, dude. Is that... What? Oh, man. People are too crazy on here. Slam the queef, I guess. She didn't slam. <laughs> what? That's enough internet for today. Exactly my thoughts right there. That's enough internet for today. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, I hope you guys like this podcast. Again, you can find us on Stitcher, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm. Uh, no, no weather method. He didn't send me anything. Yeah. It's okay. So, yeah, you can find us on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor.fm. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Radio Republic. Uh, a lot of the podcasts. If you guys want to find us, just find us on any of your favorite ones. And we'll pop up. Because we're part of Anchor. We're everywhere. We're pretty much everywhere. We're on YouTube. We're on wherever you want. Wherever you want us, we're there. We're there. We're there, man. And yeah, yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. We hope you have a wonderful weekend. And uh, yeah, thank you for the support. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.